Well, 2016 seems like an age ago. Evangelical voters were then unified behind Donald Trump and helped him win the White House. This election season, Trump's views on abortion are dividing many of those same supporters. CBN's chief political analyst, David Brody, has the story. But we got to do that, fellas, you know? In a presidential election seen as razor close, Donald Trump will once again need conservative evangelicals fully behind him if he hopes to be reelected in November. There's a difference this time around, however. Tony Perkins is with the Family Research Council and keeps a finger on the pulse of the evangelical grassroots. The temperature is not as high as it was in 2016 and 2020 when it comes to who they're supporting. The main reason comes down to abortion. In the past, Trump courted evangelicals, promising staunchly pro-life policies, and he delivered. Since the decision overturning Roe v. Wade, however, the abortion issue has led to political defeats for Republicans. That's led to Trump's refusal to endorse a federal abortion ban and his willingness to support abortion pill access through the mail. He also declared that he would be, quote, great for women and their reproductive rights, toxic language Democrats use to push abortion. Sean Spicer is Trump's former press secretary. Look, for an election that comes down to thousands of votes in handfuls of states, I think this is bad. This is it. It doesn't keep a key part of the uh, of the Republican slash conservative base excited. This was key to his victory last time with the judges, and he's undermining it. I, I just th th these are unforced errors right now, as far as I'm concerned. So has there been a shift? In an interview with CBN News, Trump campaign spokeswoman Caroline Levitt pushes back on that assumption. I would reject that there's been a shift, David. I think President Trump has been consistent and clear, uh, even in his first term as president, that the issue of abortion is one he believes and one the pro-life community has fought to bring back to the state. The Trump campaign is fully aware it needs evangelicals to show up bigly to win. That's why it quickly cleaned up another potential mess when the former president appeared to favor voting for a Florida amendment that would essentially get rid of the state's six-week ban on abortion. I am going to be voting that we need more than six weeks. Less than 24 hours later, he clarified his position, saying the amendment that would legalize abortion through the ninth month is a no-go. All of that stuff is unacceptable. So I'll be voting no for that reason. Marjorie Dannenfelser with the SBA list acknowledges the messaging has been confusing to the pro-life voters that they are trying to get to the polls. The threat would be that people stay home because they can't sort out what's the better choice. So it's our job to say, yes, I see where you're coming from, but it's still the better choice to go with the candidates who will preserve states' rights to pass pro-life laws. To be perfectly honest, I'm going door to door to do everything I can to keep Harris out of office. He's not Kamala Harris. He's not uh, advocating for abortion until birth at taxpayer expense. So we have to choose that which is least offensive or that which more clearly aligns with biblical truth. But the jury is still out if that's going to translate into the same enthusiasm. I do think what is going to happen is that you're going to have a, a, a lack of enthusiasm, which means people aren't going to vote for the other side. I may mean, always hear this question. You've heard it, David. Where are your people going to go? Well, the, the, the issue is they're not going to go anywhere. Some of them are going to stay home, and that's the last thing we need. There is a plan in place with the Faith and Freedom Coalition busier than ever on the ground. We're knocking on 10 million doors. We're making 10 million get out the vote calls. We're sending 28 million get out the vote text. CEO Ralph Reed believes born again, Bible believing evangelical voter turnout will be bigger than in 2016 or 2020. While abortion has been tricky, supporters maintain Trump still advocates for conservative pro family policies. Also, this time around, new federal election rules allow the Trump campaign to work with outside groups like Faith and Freedom to mobilize voters. Reid has a warning to conservative Christian voters who stay home. And I will tell you this, Donald Trump sometimes says and does things that I wish he wouldn't say or do, but he is the most pro-life advocate we've ever had sitting behind the Resolute desk, sitting in the Oval Office. He delivered for us. This is about the sanctity of life. If they stay home, then they don't deserve to have this victory.
They don't deserve to have leaders like that. As for the campaign, it recently launched its Believers for Trump coalition. The evangelical community is a massive part of our campaign, and we need them to win on November the 5th. And our campaign understands that. President Trump understands that. The campaign says this group has signed up more than 2,000 church captains to educate fellow evangelicals on getting out to vote and the choice before them. Uh, we're also targeting low propensity evangelical voters who may not be political, may not have voted in past election cycles, but we have teams on the ground across the battleground state that are focused on doing just that. Also this week, the campaign announced a new Catholics for Trump coalition. Trump world fully aware and all hands on deck approach is needed as the country heads toward the fall election. The question will be whether evangelicals stick with Trump to once again be his saving grace. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. Well, it's obviously a razor thin margin of victory. And it looks like all the focus is now on the state of Pennsylvania. And uh, there are a series of states that are sort of on the border as to uh, which way they're going to go. I remember 2016. I remember Hillary Clinton in a debate. And I, I was absolutely astounded she did it. In a presidential debate with millions of people watching, she advocated for the right to a late-term abortion. And that was a policy change for, for her family. Her husband, Bill Clinton, when he was president, signed into law a late-term abortion ban. That later got ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. It obviously wouldn't be ruled unconstitutional anymore because Roe versus Wade doesn't exist anymore. It's been overruled. So uh, clearly, Bill Clinton, the politician, understood uh, you can't tack into late-term abortion and somehow win an election. And, and I'm, uh, as she said it, I, I thought immediately, you, well, you just lost the election. Uh, here we are in 2024. It, it, th these are uh, profound issues that we're facing. I'm not about to tell you who to vote for. I am going to tell you, please vote, because it's up to us. We, we get to choose our candidates. I've been voting with my, holding my nose for some time now, and, and I recognize you're never going to get a perfect candidate. Uh, so whichever party you're supporting, make sure you let them know uh, why you're voting for them uh, and stand up for your Christianity in this, and please make sure you vote.